Welcome to Electronics and More. In this video, I will be replacing this 100 amp FPE Federal Pacific breaker panel with a GE Powermark Gold Label load center. Many residences built between 1950 and 1990 have these FPE panels installed. If you are looking to purchase a home with this type of breaker panel installed, you will have a very difficult time obtaining a mortgage or insurance on that property unless the FPE panel is upgraded. These FPE panels have been known to cause problems which can lead to fires. This panel is a 100 amp panel. I'm going to be installing a 200 amp panel because in the future I intend on upgrading the service entrance, all the wires, and the main disconnect on the outside of the residence. So for today we're just going to be replacing this panel out. This panel measures around 14 inches wide. I was very lucky to find a General Electric panel that's the exact same dimensions, just a little longer. So I'm going to have to chip a little higher up here in order to install the new panel. Some panels have a lip which comes over and out and the plaster will go over that lip. You're going to have to take an angle grinder, cut about a half of an inch of that sheetrock away so you're able to slide the panel out. Luckily this panel has flat sides and it's just nailed in so once I remove the nails I can grab the panel and slide it straight out of the opening. To get started, I'm going to disconnect the main breaker on the outside because the new panel is not going to have a main breaker. It's going to have main lugs. Once that's disconnected, I'm going to chip away at the top and then along the sides, I'm going to loosen it up and remove the nails and start disconnecting the wires. The very top, I cut it larger for the dimensions of my new panel. When you go to cut this, be very careful. You only want to score the sheetrock or the drywall enough that you can snap it otherwise you may cut into the wires and you could have a big problem so be very careful. The next step now I'm going to turn off the main breaker and start removing the wires one by one. All of the 120 volt circuits I'm going to leave the wires loose at the end like this and all of the 240 volt circuits around the panel I'm going to twist the wires together. Before I do that, I want to give you a closer look at this panel to show you how this panel is laid out. You can see your main lugs. This is a 120 volt leg. That's your 120 volt leg. And down here is your neutral. This panel is bonded, which means the neutral and the ground is connected together. So your ground wires and your neutral wires are all lined up right here. Right over here, you can see the copper strap that bonds the enclosure to the neutral line goes right into this strip with all the other neutral and ground wires. This panel uses a jumper to go from this bus bar which goes straight down. It sends that jumper over to this bus bar. So you got two bus bars going down right here and on this side you have another two going straight down. So this is the same leg on the left as this one on the left and this over here, that lug, goes down to this bus bar. It's tied into this bus bar. The new panel is going to have one set of bus bars that go straight down the middle. One more thing I wanted to show you, luckily this panel uses Romex wires, there's no conduit. If there was metal conduit here, you would actually have to push that conduit up into the attic or the crawl space to be able to install a panel that's a little longer like you see here. If you can't push it up, then you're going to have to remove the connector on the end of the conduit, cut the pipe shorter so the new panel can go into position. All right, I got all the breakers removed. In this panel, all of the circuits were not properly labeled. So what I did is I just removed all the wires. I twisted all the 240 volt circuits together, like you see right here, and all the other wires are loose. I could tell the ampacity of the circuit breaker by looking at the size of the wire. When you go to remove the connectors, take a screwdriver, put it on the left side, hit it with the hammer, and unscrew all of these. You're going to pull every single circuit through the enclosure and position it outside the wall like you see here. This right here is one of the single pole FPE breakers. That's what it looks like. 
clips onto both bars, but only one has the metal contact to make contact with one of the bars only. If this had two in here, metal there and metal there, that would be a double pole breaker, 240 volts. Like this one right here. This right here is a double pole. You can see the clip there and a clip there. This is the inside of the FPE panel. This is the two bus bars here, which are connected in parallel with these two bus bars here. You can see the main lugs jumps across to this one, but that 120 volt leg comes around and ties into this bus bar. The bus bars are in excellent shape considering this panel was made in 1962. There's no evidence of any heating issues, pitting, or any other damage caused by arcing. Over here is the neutral lug. This is where the neutral wire was connected from the main disconnect. And over here are the terminal strips where the neutral wires and ground wires were connected. This was bonded to the enclosure as well. The problem with these Federal Pacific panels was not so much with this part here with the bus bars, but the problem was with the circuit breakers. Some of the circuit breakers had a tendency to overheat, melt, and potentially cause fires. Take a look over here. You can see these bus bars are a little wider than these bus bars. If it was me, I would have had both of these bus bars the same as these two here. This looks a little thin. I would have had that a little thicker too. And this over here is a better look at the neutral bar with all the grounds. The electrical panel has now been removed. The easiest way to remove it is to tilt the top of the panel outward and then you're going to pull up on the panel once it clears the wall and you can slide it over the wires at the bottom. Over here, in this case, the wires at the bottom are all in electrical metallic tubing. Over here you can see all the electrical conduits lined up. You're going to take the new panel, place it side by side with the old, and remove the proper knockouts. The good thing is these conduits have some play. They move about an inch or two in each direction so you should not have any problem sliding the new panel over all these wires and locking them back down onto the conduit. Now I'm going to show you what the panel looks like up close with all the knockouts. Okay the panel on the left is the Federal Pacific panel that I removed and the one on the right is the General Electric Load Center that I'm going to be installing. Take a look at the bottom where the knockouts are. I'm going to have to remove the knockouts like you see in this one on the new panel and make sure they're as close to the same location as the old panel had them. Once the knockouts have been removed I can slide the panel back into the wall, the bottom edge over the bottom wires and then push the top in and slide the top wires where the knockouts are at the top. Easy enough to pop out, place your screwdriver on the opposite side of the ring, which would be right here. You can see it's connected there. Over here is where the screwdriver would go, and you could just hit it with a hammer, push it through, grab it with pliers, twist it until it pops out. Okay, as you can see, the panel is now reinstalled. I had an area above the panel that had to be made a little larger in order to tilt the panel back in with all the Romex cables. If you don't have a larger area above, you're not going to be able to push the panel back in. So make sure you cut that area out, maybe an extra two or three inches above the panel. Once it's installed, you can put the piece of sheetrock back in, tape it, and compound it. Every single wire is installed with the Romex clamps tightened down securely. You can see the 120 volt leg here going to one bus bar and the other bus bar has the other 120 volt leg going around and down. I have the anti-short bushing on top. The neutral comes up and around. It's marked white and it connects to this lug right here. This lug connects to this entire strip and it jumpers across to this strip and I also have it bonded with this ground screw. The ground screw takes this entire 
neutral rail, which is connected to the neutral wire, and it connects it to the panel so it's all one. We're going to connect all the neutral and ground wires to these terminals you see here. What I'm going to start doing now is installing each breaker one by one, and then I'll be back to show you the progress. Keep in mind this panel that I just installed is a 200 amp panel. The other panel was 100 amps. Even though this is a 200 amp panel, it will only be supplied 100 amps. The good thing about this is I could upgrade the service entrance conductors later, replace the main disconnect, as well as the meter can to have the full 200 amp capacity in the future if I would like to. All right, the panel is now completely installed. All the breakers are in position. You can see all the hot wires, which are black and red, connected into each circuit breaker. All the white wires and all of the bare copper wires, the ground wires, are secured to each one of these terminal strips on the left side and the right side. Ordinarily, I would have all the neutrals on one side to keep things neat and have all the grounds on the other side, but because the wires in the old panel were much shorter, I was unable to do so, so I have the neutrals and the grounds all on the neutral bar, which is bonded. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please rate it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also be sure to check out my video playlist as well. Thank you for watching.